Hello, Dominic Herbst here with Restoring Relationships. And uh, the announcement I always like to give right here at the beginning is come and join us for a discipleship walk through Calvary beginning May 2nd. We actually just finished our previous last evening. So we're beginning once again for others to register online at restoringrelationships.org and you will see right there when you come online that you can register. You can call our office and do it a direct re registration. And for those of you that may need some help, we are here to give you some form of help uh, in any way that we possibly can. The Lord will always make a way. So in this discipleship, the Lord said, go and make disciples of all nations. And we want to be a part of that. You might say, well, how's that different from counseling or other ministry approaches? Well, counseling opens you up to the knowledge of the truth in the place you need to apply it most. It is good to seek counsel. In the multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. However, when you are aware of what needs to be transformed or changed within you that only God can do, it is time to walk it out. A person cannot verbally take you from a place of revelation to a place of change, but the Holy Spirit can take you and we become navigators where we walk you through Calvary. But we actually don't touch it. The closer you get to us handing you up to the Lord in these five hour and a half sessions by Zoom coming right into the place where you live that begins on Tuesday night at 7 to 8.30 Eastern Time. You have the opportunity to get into the presence of God in the place where the Holy Spirit will touch you, cleanse you, purify you at the very place you need Him most. Usually and many times in the area of your most uh, painful events of your life. We talk and must talk much about the fact that the blood of Christ cleansed us from sin, gave us the promise of eternal life. That beginning, though, to walk out salvation through the journey through Calvary, to be set free from the encumbrances of pain that has become oftentimes infected wounds that the enemy will exploit and he will aggravate and he will torment us. And we don't need that because the torment in your loved ones will become your torment very quickly. And that's what our subject is about right now. So this is an area that we want to not just talk to understand it, we need to talk about how to come against it. So I'm going to get into that right now, but don't forget May 2nd, and the next five Tuesdays begin. Come and register now. The title is Breaking the Jezebel and Narcissistic Spirit in Your Marriage. This nature of Jezebel and narcissism, actually there is crossover in each of these terms. Oftentimes we like the name to tell us what kind of person we might be dealing with. And we end up using the name to label them. Well, they're a narcissist or they're a Jezebel type of thing. You know, you want to be careful with that because the truth is when you begin to put that name and apply it to a loved one, you're putting them under the curse of the name. And just as in Hollywood they say, there is no bad publicity. So the demons know that we're going to try to expose them at times, those that have the discerning of the spirits and want to come against them, as God has called us to do. Uh, what they'll do is they'll take any acclaim they possibly can, even if it's exposing them for all the depravity that they bring to our lives. So this is a very serious war that is going on. Now, the narcissist, the origin, is really through Freudian psychology. Freudian psychology is not, it was not a, a deliverance from the living God. It is a man-centered science. Keep that in mind. A man, a man is incomplete and, and man is contaminated and man is fallen. So the fact that you have a science that came from some of the darkest figures in world history, such as Sigmund Freud and his contemporaries. Now you say, but, but some of that makes sense. Yes, it does. It's just like the enemy uses pieces of truth to engage the one he wants to deceive and then he ensnares them with the lies circulating the truth. And secular psychology will not give you answers of freedom or deliverance. They will not give you answers to be set free. 
Uh, they will only give you methods by which you try to deal with the person that is referred to as the narcissist. You will notice that the secular world uses the Greek mythology, the names from Greek mythology, to put to the name of a person's characteristic behavior. But the, uh, the Jezebel, which again harmonizes so much with the symptoms of the narcissist that we call out today, is actually the biblical name. Although it's a woman's name, it is, not, it is genderless in the spiritual realm. So a man can be a narcissist, or I'm, I'm sorry, a man can be a Jezebel or have an influence of a Jezebel spirit as a woman can have the influence of a Jezebel spirit. Was there an actual Jezebel in history? Yes, and she was the wife of Ahab, Queen Jezebel, and she was very evil and very wicked. So enough on that. Let's get to some of the symptoms. I don't want to spend a lot of time on symptoms because, again, symptoms are not the issue. Uh, they give you and help you define what it is you're dealing with, but those of you watching already pretty much know. You can find them online. You probably already have. But very quickly, the symptoms of the Jezebel spirit, you can tease these out of the Word of God directly. They're controlling and manipulative. Oh, that's not surprising, is it? Because they want to be this, the little God in your life. They want to control you. They want to manipulate you. They're, uh, they're anxious and fearful. And what is actually driving them to control you is they don't want to come under or submit to another person and get hurt again. Because oftentimes the Jezebel spirit and influence comes in as a result of a pain that has never really been healed by the Lord Jesus Christ in our soul. I'm talking pain on this one now. now they are jealous and demanding. They're sexually impure and selfish. They're lying and deceitful all the time. They desire for power and leadership. They want to shut down the true revelation of the Holy Spirit. They're more dominant and they intimidate. They act assured but are very insecure and they cannot stand to be told no. They love to provoke people until they get angry and then blame them for getting angry. It's all set up. This is what the enemy spirits do. This is what Satan does. He sets us up for a fall only then to blame us and accuse us at the, at the foot of the third heaven before God and, and, and Jesus at his right hand on the th throne. He is a, the accuser of the brethren, accusing us day and night before the throne. Uh, these, uh, these influences, this Jezebel influence loves to provoke people until they get angry and then and we, we talked about that and then blame them and they enjoy starting arguments. They, if they're not in an argument, they'll create one. Constant chatter in the mind. That means they're being assaulted and assailed by enemy spirit activity. You may not be aware of that, but their torment will become your torment. And I'm sure you're already aware of that if this is hitting some of those areas. Now, the narcissist, you're going to see a whole lot of overlap. Therefore, once again, well, well do I need to know if he or she is a narcissist or, or, or Jezebel? No, you don't. What you need to know and understand is you're dealing with influences that are holding your precious loved one captive. And Jesus came to set the captives free. And we need to get about the strategies for not only intervention, but to be set for deliverance and freedom. That's what God wants us to do. Not begin these big uh, talking times. Well, yeah, this is what he does. and This is what she did last week. And this is who she is. This is the way she'll always be. No, you, you want to be careful with that. You want to be talking only solutions, always solutions, always truth, no opinions. Get your opinions out of this. The enemy loves all the turbulence of talking about all the things I'm going through and under this. No, appeal to the living God and recognize that he has a purpose for you in living with that one who is under that captivity, that you become the lead intercessor. And I know you're probably feeling, I've been praying and it doesn't work, or God's not hearing me. There is much more that we need to talk about, and I want to get to that. But let me just make sure I do the segment on the narcissist. This is coming from the Mayo Clinic. Have an unreasonably high sense of self-importance, and they require constant and excessive attention or admiration so they constantly kind of pretty much steal the uh, they take a lot of the air out of the room of a, a group of people uh, they feel they deserve privileges and special treatment expect to be recognized as superior even without achievement or demonstration of that 
And they make their talents and achievements so much bigger than they are. They're preoccupied with fantasies about success, power, brilliance, beauty, or the perfect mate. There's a lot of pride. This is all coded in pride. And you know what caused the fall of Satan? Let's not forget in Isaiah 14, be a good study for you, where he said, Satan, the creature, said, I will five times. And it all had to do with rising above the stars, rising above the throne of God, up the sides of the north. Take a look at that. He wasn't satisfied to say it once. He said it in five different ways, and it caused the fall of Lucifer, star of the morning, arguably one of the greatest, one of the most powerful creatures ever created by God. Creature. Operative word, creature, not creator. One creator, God. And he sent the Son, who was the creator of the Trinity, to die for us. Let's not, uh, let's not forget that. So uh, they're critical and look down on people that they don't feel are important to them. They take advantage of others to get what they want. They have an inability or unwillingness to recognize the needs and feelings of others. Uh, they are envious of others and believe others envy them. They're so self-absorbed so self-centered, so arrogant, so boastful, so prideful. How many more descriptors do you need? Boy, have I ever landed on a lot of the places on that script. Ah, full disclosure. Oh, Lord. And you know what? The more those attributes that fly through uh, people, the more that the power of that influence owns that person. And you know what? They're the last ones to see it. So, uh, rather than spend any more time on that, this is why we're here. Spending too much time on the symptoms leaves little time for solutions and action plans for intervention. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to look in and look up. Stop looking out and having all these descriptors and going from one person to another. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm going through. Start Stop taking your lamentation and your, your, your hardship and your torment this way horizontally and take it in and up. Offer it as a sacrifice of praise before the throne for what Christ did for you in sacrificing himself on the cross of Calvary. I offer this, Lord, as a sacrifice of the pain that I'm enduring to be uh, associated and connected with the pain that you shed for me at the cross of Calvary. So, that vile spirit has declared war on you and your family. You need to get how serious this is, and it's time for you to declare war on that spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But remember this, the battle belongs to the Lord. Take that in, say it repeatedly, let it echo even when you're not thinking about it, off the walls of your mind and heart. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed at this great horde. Horde. Now there's a term for these enemy influences. Ugh. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Be strong in the Lord. Victory belongs to the Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. In Second Corinthians Chapter 10, verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Do not come at this enemy influence with carnality. Don't come against Jezebel toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You and Jezebel's spirit, don't come against the narcissistic one. Why? You're already defeated. So never engage the one influenced by that spirit in a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. They will not hear you. They will not receive from you. They will not submit to you. How many more times are you going to go at it knowing that the, uh, the ultimate outcome is the same as it always was before? If you live two or three more lifetimes, it will be the same all through those lifetimes as well. You can't win. If you think you've won alone against these spirit influences, then you've been deceived. There is a blinding pride that enshrouds your loved one. Your human flesh-based reasoning cannot penetrate the enemy's darkness. Stop trying. Stop doing it. You're, using, you're wasting energy that needs to be focused into the spiritual realm. You cannot reason with a narcissist, nor can you reason out a Jezebel spirit that is binding and blinding your loved one. You can't reason that out of them. Counseling will not, it will not counsel it out of them. You can have two or three witnesses coming against and that spirit actually can become stronger. 
in taking a complete authority that it really doesn't have, but it's taking it, it's stealing. The thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. He's stealing that which does not belong to him in the area of the soul where your, your loved one has been afflicted. That enemy spirit influence is hiding out, and it waits for the opportunity to come and to attack, even when you least expect it. So you, they are held captive. Your loved one is held captive and spiritually blind to their captivity. They don't know it. They will deny it. Sometimes they'll deny it even though they may know it. Uh, but it, when they do deny it, it's usually because they're blind to it. So they deny it not so much because they know they're held captive, but because they don't see it. That's why Jesus said, I came to give sight to the blind. He meant in the spiritual realm so that we could discern what enemy spirits and their strategies are in the spiritual realm. Your loved one is dancing with the devil. How many metaphors, analogies do you need to help you understand? I want you to imagine it. They're dancing with the spirit and the spirit will always lead when they dance with the devil. And when the two of them dance in the dark, they're looking for ways to pull you in to that same dark dance, filled with the depravity. Why? The enemy is never satisfied with the one he is primarily holding captive in your family, in your group of friends, and the people you work with. He wants to use that person to bring the same torment upon you that he has brought within them. That is why you cannot, again, come against this in flesh. As their tormenting actions increase, you will become weary. You'll become sick. Not just soul sick, S-O-U-L. You'll become physically sick, become depressed, anxious, heavy laden with a weight that only Christ can alleviate from you. That's why one of the reasons why Jesus said in Matthew 11, uh, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's the only one that's going to be able to give you that rest. If you ever sleep all night long in a house with the influence of Jezebel or the narcissist, I'm using them both because some of you hold fast to one over the other, but the truth is, that's not the important issue here. The fact is both people are afflicted. What you call it is secondary. And what the symptoms are is actually secondary or tertiary. How you get set free of it is everything. Everything you must transition from all this dialogue about what you're dealing with, what they've done to you, what they've taken from you, and you've got to take this in and up. You and the Lord alone are conquerors. You're more than conquerors according to Romans. So, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ conquered Satan and all enemy influences that he commands, which includes these spiritual influences. This is a spiritual war that can only be fought in the spiritual realm. The strategy for breaking the power of these spiritual influences, let's walk through that as we close out. First, begin a season of fasting and prayer. Jesus said in Mark 9, this one does not come out but by prayer and fasting and you'll see it and you'll see the story of one taken over. Now that was before his Holy Spirit came. But the remedy is still going to be the same to deny the flesh of those things that normally distract us and keep us focused on this earthly plane, on the horizontal plane, on the fleshly desires and needs. When you deny yourself of those and you get into a season of prayer with God, his Holy Spirit will bring forth a fortification of power through His presence in you in places within your soul that He never had before. Why? Because you set yourself apart. You consecrated. You allowed yourself to be consecrated before Him fully, completely to let His Spirit have much more of you than He ever had before. When we receive Christ, we do get all of Him. But he does not get all of us. And the fasting and prayer is giving him more of us in a personal relationship where the glow and the glory of God comes in. And even before you speak, when you come into the presence of anyone who is under the influence of some demonic force, that demonic force will begin to tremble. You won't necessarily know it, but it will begin to tremble. And it was holding a person captive. And it will, uh, it, it, it will actually be in a fear in a fear and trembling that it, it doesn't know how to operate at that point. And they're not trembling at you. They're trembling at the Christ in you and that glow and the glory of the Spirit coming out from you. And your prayer has prepared for that confrontation. And when you prepare for the confrontation, God begins to fortify that war ground. That's ground for war. And he brings enemy 
uh, he brings uh, angels, great warrior angels, against the enemy spirits, and he brings the full force, which is always the fullness of the the uh, uh, eternal and and omnipotent power that comes through the Holy Spirit. You can't go wrong. That's why you and the Lord are more than conquerors, but it must be you and the Lord, and the Lord and you. It cannot be you, and it cannot be you anymore engaging in this foolishness. Oh, my, so terrible. Uh, this is why th that so many people are just weary and well-doing. Paul said, don't be weary and well-doing. Well, the weariness is often because they're, they're looking to the flesh for their answers. They're looking for the flesh. They're going, and again, and you hear me say it too often, it's not my verbiage, but they go to the phone before they go to the throne. You've got enough right there. The Christ in you, the hope of glory. You in Christ, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So this season of fasting and prayers, cease all face-to-face, toe-to-toe engagements with your spouse or loved one. Why? All you're doing is giving energy to that already powerful spirit that cannot be defeated by you alone in the flesh, but is already defeated in the spiritual realm. It's why Christ said at Calvary, it is finished. What he finished there, he wants to finish in you and in your loved one. But he has used you as the vessel. God is using you as the enemy is using your loved one as the vessel of which he incorporates to bring the, your loved one down and down and into a place of torment and destruction. God is using you to be the vessel of his deliverance and his setting free the captivity of your loved one. But you've got to let God use you. You've got to surrender to him. You've got to fully obey what he's saying in his word and do not try to do this on your own and you've got to fully trust him with all your heart. Do not lean on any of your own understanding. You can't trust it. In all your ways you shall acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So do preemptive strikes in the morning, the evening, throughout the day as led by the Holy Spirit. We're using war terminology here. You know when the infantries are coming against each other in ground battle, a preemptive strike is an example of an airstrike that goes out ahead of the infantry and begins to hammer and hammer and hammer the enemy, weakens the enemy. So how do you do that? You make declarations, proclamations into the throne room, calling those spirits out by name, by what God, the Holy Spirit, has revealed to you in terms of what they're doing. You gag them. You, yeah, you have authority in Jesus Christ to gag them. You shut their mouths and you remove them. Now, the deliverance doesn't come at, when you do the rebuke and correction. It can give you and buy you time every time you're coming face to face with the manifestation of that spirit in your loved one who is under that influence because they're not in control when that happens. The enemy influences. Oh, don't worry. You're still dealing with them. You are still dealing with them. I'm not talking about something where they're so completely taken over at that point, but you know there's more there that you're dealing with than him. And you say, well, what's the evidence of that? Well, that's Ephesians 6.12, right? Bug spray. <laughs> Our warfare are not carnal, but mulling down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal of the flesh, but mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds. And 6.12 is you do not deal with principal, you do not deal with flesh and blood. It's not you and them now anymore, no more. You've brought the whole power of heaven with you. Um, and that is, you're not uh, dealing with flesh and blood. You're dealing with principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. Why? They're always around in the scene. We used to say they're behind the scenes. No, they're in the scene. You don't see them. You don't smell them. You don't hear them. Okay, but you know they're there because of the influences that are coming forth. And you are making these declarations and proclamations of taking authority over the enemy spirits in these preemptive strikes that even when the enemy is going to attack that day, or probably will, you're going to be on high alert. You're going to be highly vigilant. And warriors are always taught to be vigilant because even when you're going after the enemy, he's coming after you. So why wait? Why wait till you have a scene or a situation where uh, you're completely blindsided by the attack and it doesn't mean God isn't there, he's there and you can go right to it, bring him to the scene, take the authority that you need to do and God will answer. The thing is though, when you do a preemptive strike, you're on high alert, you've already weakened the enemy and what God is doing is he's preparing the fullness of time for the complete deliverance of your loved one. 
So he's also preparing for you to be a special forces in the war, in the spiritual war against the gates of hell. You know the special forces, they're not better than the infantry, but they are trained in a very, very skilled capacity to, to do things that, that the infantry is not trained to do. You're being trained. You're being discipled. You have an opportunity here to do things that you never would have, wouldn't have been able to do, would have been able to do. If you haven't allowed God to use this as a, as a wondrous, uh, glorious event coming literally out of the throne room of heaven, where you become an agent of special forces against the gates of hell. So when led by the Holy Spirit, bind the spirit of Jezebel, the, the influence spirit of narcissism in your spouse, in your loved one, in the name of Jesus Christ to neutralize the attack. You know, when you're in a conflict and you realize I'm getting caught in, I'm getting pulled into this. I can't believe it. I thought I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get pulled into this. Oh, they're so clever. They're so tactical and engaging. All right, rebuke right then. You say, hey, rebuke? You can rebuke them. You're really rebuking that spirit that has the influence over your loved one. I rebuke and, and I will not receive this. I will not come under this. I rebuke this spirit of uh, Jezebel or uh, narcissism. And again, please don't make it about which name you say or whatever. I rebuke it. I bind it. And I cast it out. I, I'll even gag them. I gag the spirit. You will not speak in the name of Jesus Christ. You, you receive not because you ask not. You got the authority. I mean, look at Luke uh, 10, 20. The, the 70 came back. Jesus sent them out two by two. They came back. They said, even the spirits are subject unto us. Well, it's, it's, he said, well, you know, it's like I told you that. Now, that's a paraphrase. He said, but rejoice not. The spirits are subject unto you. He took it well, much far, further. He said, Re rather rejoice. Your names are written in heaven. And I thought to myself, well, yeah, that's... We're, we've got eternal life. Yes, you do, but you know what? You can live on this life with all the power of heaven brought, brought through you. But you receive not because you ask not. All the authority in Jesus that he said, I have all authority in heaven and in earth, will come in the form of my spirit to you and through you now. Your position is in the heavenlies with Christ now. Your experience is here. But your position, meaning that all the authority that goes with the position of Christ is in you, coming through you. What are we waiting for? What, what are we doing? We either believe that or we don't. You may say, what if I do it? It doesn't work. It shouldn't work if you do it. It's not on you. Oh, no. What I mean, if I say in the name of Jesus, it's on him. You don't have to do some sort of, you know, uh, dance or some sort of protocol you take, you take authority over the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. And I don't have enough faith. If you obey, I remember the first time I did it, I had no faith. And people said, well, why, why did the enemy cease and pull away? Because I obeyed. I obeyed. Just obey. Just obey. It's on him. It's not on you. It's on him. He wants it on him. He doesn't want it on you and me. That's where we get into trouble. That's where we make the, all the, we, we, we convolute it. And then the enemy gets in our mind. So I, I told you he wouldn't show up. He was there the whole time. And he's saying, just obey me. Take the authority. Give it to me. Do the fasting and prayer. Do the preemptive strikes. Prepare your wartime and I will show up. I'm here now and I'll show up with everything I have. Any failure on their part, okay, require your spouse to come under third-party accountability of one or more spiritual leaders outside the home with regular progress reports to you, to you. And they also are being constantly aversed on what is happening with regard to where they're at in their journey. Now, this may not be the best way to go forth in fighting the Spirit. The Lord may call you to come under, uh, I'm sorry, to uh, uh, come under biblical separation, but not a divorce. A separation, not a divorce, until they fully submit to God for their deliverance. 
What we have to understand is if they're using and drawing strength from putting you under the subjection of their control manipulation, those spirits, they're like also witchcraft spirits. They want to control. They want to keep you under curse. They want to keep you under the same bondage they're under. Their bondage can become your bondage. When there's actual physical separation, that spirit does not have the power to continue to put upon you hour by hour in your own home. Even when you're not interacting, that spirit presence presence is there through them. It's coming through them as a doorway that is causing them uh, a distress and, and causing you, dis causing them distress becomes your distress. So the separation allows you to surrender the battle fully to the Lord and to allow the Holy Spirit to bring you full restoration in Christ Jesus. Now there's more to come and these are many of the things that we cover in our walking through Calvary. Why am I promoting this? Because you can't, you can go through a whole season of counsel with us, outpatient, on Zoom. You can be in another country. Many are coming from other countries and have been for some time. However, if you're willing to be discipled by the Holy Spirit, we navigate you externally, but the Holy Spirit navigates you internally. You're not just going to hear and know and understand and have revelation of where you need the power of the Holy Spirit the most in you to have you set free. You're going to know how to get set free as you walk it out because knowing or hearing where the attack is coming from within lets you know what you're up against. But walking it out lets you uh, have total and complete freedom through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the only way you're going to be free, through him. Being aware that a, a man has cancer doesn't heal his cancer. He may know every kind of cancer. He may know the organs and the tissue that have been infected. He knows as much as his doctor about his cancer, but he's not anymore healed. He just knows about it. And oftentimes counseling stops at giving you revelation of what's wrong. Isn't it time to walk out what's right? And that is to obey the, the walk, the journey, the discipleship through Calvary. So we look forward to seeing you. And we'll see you again too next week. Uh, so let's have a prayer right now for the deliverance and the restoration of your loved one. Father God, we are clear. This battle belongs to you. Father, we want to be absolutely clear of the timing of the actions that we take. We want to look completely to you. We want to be disciplined in the flesh so that we take a season of prayer and fasting, as you commanded in Mark 9, and thereby using me as the vessel for the loved one so precious to me that I want to be set free. Lord God, I know the freedom and it is only exclusively coming from you. Also, in order to pierce the darkness of the blindness and the pride and the arrogance over them, only you can do that. That cannot be reasoned out of them. So I'm praying, Lord, that you would begin the, the sequence within me to begin to declare this war right now, starting today, against the enemy spirit activity. Not my loved one, not my spouse, but against the enemy spirits that are holding him or her captive. We trust you now and for what is ahead. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and see you soon.